it is not the president himself, but rather the office of the president. Uh, so he is he is doing the right thing in representing the office of the president. And there can be conflicts between the, the incumbent and the office. Uh, Don did get wrong that I went to prison. I didn't. I was actually in the witness protection program for uh, on and off from uh, June of 1975 till January. Excuse me, 1973, June to January of 1975. The New York Times, quoting a former Whitewater investigator, is saying that this is like having the keys to the kingdom. Is that how you see it? Well, it certainly does give them a, a good guide as to where the problems may or may not be. Uh, as the clarifying remark that McGahn didn't in any way incriminate the president, we don't know if that's true or not. Uh, probably McGahn doesn't know if it's true or not. Uh, he, he gave them the, the knowledge he had, uh, which was would be invaluable to an investigator. Could the president have stepped in and prevented McGahn from talking open, openly? Uh, I think he could. He could do it on, on a couple of bases. Uh, first, there'd be the attorney-client privilege, which would cause the, the independent, excuse me, the special counsel to have to test that and go to court and get it uh, uh, resolved. And there is no privilege for government attorneys. Uh, personal privilege like that. So that would be the one issue. The other, even probably a stronger basis would be executive privilege, where the president uh, can say that he doesn't want people who is helping him in his deliberation process and making his decisions testifying before other bodies like the Congress or the courts. Uh, that's what Nixon did with his tapes. He said they were subject to executive privilege. The court said, well, that's not true when a grand jury sends a subpoena for them. I want to read you a quote, another one from the Times article about how McGahn and his lawyer feared McGahn was potentially being set up and came up with their plan. It says he, McGahn, and Mr. Burke, his lawyer, devised their own strategy to do as much as possible to cooperate with Mr. Mueller to demonstrate that Mr. McGahn did nothing wrong. John, what do you make of this idea that McGahn was worried about being thrown under the bus? <laughs> That's one I understand. <laughs> there, that was what uh, prompted me. I, did, I didn't talk to the media during Watergate or ever when I was in government. Uh, but when uh, I had tried to get them to end the cover-up, and it was clear they weren't going to, uh, but rather they were going to try to make me the scapegoat for the cover-up, and the former Attorney General John Mitchell, the, the scapegoat for the bungled Watergate break-in, uh, I, I dictated a brief comment uh, that my secretary read to the Washington Post, the AP, and the New York Times to get the message through that I wasn't interested in being their scapegoat. So <laughs> I can understand his <laughs> thinking. Do you think the president should be worried? You know, it, it, the, the, the investigation, if it were as simple as uh, Dowd and uh, 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 thought and explained initially the approach they were taking, it would have been over. Uh, but it is obviously much more complex. Uh, they did, didn't have all the facts. Uh, I'm not sure that Trump himself has all the facts. Uh, some of his people may have been unwitting in their cooperation with uh, the Russians. Some of them might have been unaware of even the, how they were helping or assisting. So this has to all be sorted out, and counterintelligence investigations uh, are not simple. They, they, they mm -hmm. often go on for years. All right, John Dean, thank you very much. We appreciate your insight.